Welcome. In front of me is a Motorola Moto G 5G Plus and today I will go over unboxing along with a brief overview of the phone itself. So let's get it started. This is the box that it comes in obviously. Let's pop it open. As you can see there is nothing from here. Just a flimsy cardboard box. So I'll drop that to the side. Then we get the phone itself. I'm gonna take it out and place it on the side for now then we get some paperwork no one cares uh, some eject tool charging cable so this is a type A to type C so just a normal type C cable basically and then a charger that's nice there's like an engraving of 20 on it um, let me quickly check the wattage of this. So this is a max 20 watt charger. So it's okay charger, I guess. Uh, drop it in and that's about it. Nothing more in here. So just gather that so it doesn't trash my desk here. And move to the phone. So quickly get it here so as the phone itself now I'm gonna quickly peel that off there we go and I already went through the setup of it so this is more for a show so let's unlock it and there we go so this is the massive 6.7 inch display um, with a resolution of 1080p by 2520 uh, comes around to be 84.3% screen to body ratio so fairly minimal bezels honestly and uh, it has 409 pixels per inch that's because of the 1080p resolution uh, it does look really crisp uh, although the brightness of it isn't getting really high this is maxed out right now and uh, kind of like well probably majority of the IPS displays uh, it ain't getting any brighter than that so keep that in mind now the key I guess part of this display that is really nice it's the fact that it actually runs at 90 Hertz so it is not the typical slow uh, 60 Hertz display it is actually just bumped up in a mid-range device so highly appreciate that that fact here I really like the fact that well, just the mid-range phones are getting a 60 or not 60 but 90 and even above uh, refresh rate so that is I really like that and then it has an HDR10 and now that ain't gonna be anything special uh, it's not even HDR10 plus and this is an IPS uh, LCD display so do not expect anything outstanding here in terms of the HDR um, so yeah and also as you can see at the front we got two cameras so there's a 16 megapixel and 8 megapixel sensor now the 16 is a wide sensor while 8 megapixel is an ultra wide so you have quite a range of capturing selfie and just like front facing camera action and when it comes down to recording it does record at 1080p 30 and also at the back if I flip it over we have the 48 megapixel main sensor then we got an 8 megapixel ultra wide 5 megapixel macro and 2 megapixel depth and in terms of shooting video it shoots at 4k 30 or 1080p 30 and 16 so fairly nice for a budget device honestly or mid-range I should say now while we're talking on about the cameras uh, let's just capture a couple photos here so I'm gonna get my priced position here there we go and let's launch the camera and see how it will do so I'm not sure if there's a way to select Oh, it actually does automatically select to macro so let's start off with a macro which is apparently a 5 megapixel sensor this 
so it is okay-ish I would say I'm, I'm not necessarily blown away here with the macro capability let's try it again maybe it was just a bad shot uh, I'm not a photographer so just you know keep that in mind um, so it does I would say mediocre job at the macro now I'm gonna bring my phone just as a comparison I want to see just how much of a difference this will be now this is my beat up uh, mate 20 pro and quickly just see how it compares if I can actually get the light and this seems to be really <laughs> challenging to get actually so let's see how that came out here um, I mean obviously this is way higher resolution um, I actually don't remember what the macro here is so can't really say but obviously it's just better uh, this one seems to be doing a kind of poor job and something tells me that if I go with the 48 megapixel sensor it's just gonna zoom in closer and have higher quality than the macro so let me quickly try that and stop switching to the macro that would be greatly appreciated I'm trying to grab the focus here, but the moment it grabs focus, it then switches to macro for some reason. So this is really getting annoying. Now this is again macro, apparently. Or no, it wasn't actually a macro, my bad. It pops up with the option for me to switch to macro, so that's a little bit misguiding. Um, so, yeah, basically as I thought, if you captured just a 48 megapixel normal photo, it can zoom in way closer and do a better job than the macro lens itself. So, uh, saying that this phone has phone four lenses is kind of a lie if one of them is just useless in my opinion now let's go let's bring up a figure here and see how it does normally with it let's also go for the macro again and see if this will change anything This actually might look a little bit better, we'll see. So there we go, there is the macro. And it did come out better than, I guess, the toilet paper there. <laughs> so, let's, let's go back to it. So this is a normal shot. Which you can see it's out of focus at the front, so that's just my bad. Uh, but honestly, below that, it's it actually kept it really nice, so I'm surprised with this one. Uh, some of the budget devices or like mid-range struggle with the shadows uh, in the darker areas. Well, here you can clearly see what's under here. Uh, just I didn't capture it very well with the uh, well, lack of actual focus right here, but you can see the focus on the leg part and just overly everywhere else so this is an okay photo here so honestly it isn't doing too bad of a job uh, I guess just the first idea of bringing the price position was not of a greatest one probably because everything here is white almost now also I guess we can check out how the selfie one does with my my face here so it's looking really well actually So, not really what I wanted to do, but it's 
open I guess the photo gallery and see how that those came out once I can actually oh there we go find it so it does do the flip thing which is really disorienting actually um, so this came out come out fairly good I would say um, better than I would expect um, it's still lacking a little bit of quality that could be because well as you've seen in the background uh, this is a kind of a dark area so I have to say it looked okay now moving on to the specs of the device and out of the camera territory uh, this ca device comes with a Snapdragon uh, 765 so a mid-range chipset uh, it has two different options of storage and also RAM so if you go for the 64 gigabyte storage you get 4 gigabytes of RAM and if you go for the 128 gigabyte storage you get 6 gigabytes of RAM and that is also expandable via the SD card so you can expand it even further if you want to assuming you're not going to be using two SIM cards uh, because one of the, uh, the SD card uh, slot also doubles as a SIM tray if you wanted to and it does have a fairly uh, huge battery of 5000 milliamp hours and uh, comes with like I said before 20 watt charger uh, and now just for the final the price of it is 300 so honestly for the buck it seems like a fairly nice device especially with that 90 hertz display I, I do have to say that that is a really nice touch and the device just looks nice it does have like a nice feel to it runs really well um, and uh, I'm in a way kind of surprised by this I was expecting it to be a little bit worse um, there are certain things that I'm not necessarily fond of uh, I personally would for instance like to see a fingerprint instead of on the side on the power key as you see right here or hopefully you can get us get to see there we go if I move the camera or the light so there is the fingerprint it's basically a combo of power key and finger uh, I would probably like to see it under the display instead of instead of on the side um, I've kind of maybe that's just me but I'm kind of used to just pressing my finger to the display and automatically it having being unlocked and just being able to automatically continue from there instead of kind of like trying to press here and then go to a display now it seems like maybe a trivial problem for me or for you but um, it's just kind of what I'm used to so that's what I'm kind of getting at here now also those two cameras right here are I don't really uh, maybe I'm not necessarily you know recording TikToks or anything like that so uh, cameras aren't important to me honestly I would probably live without any kind of difference if my phone came out without any front-facing cameras I would probably not see any problem with that and have and go with my normal life without even noticing it honestly so two cameras on here are in my opinion a little bit of an overkill it's more like a uh, look at me i'm flexing i got two cameras uh, because one isn't enough uh, even though both of them aren't necessarily the most amazing cameras so it's more to rack up the count of cameras and overall because we have well, four cameras on the back uh, which one of them we already know it's useless and then we got two cameras in the front which we don't need two of them you could have placed one better one and call it a day and then basically do switching of like how much it crops in or zooms in that would have solved the problem and you would actually have a better camera but this is more of a just race to however many cameras you can jam onto the phone so i'm personally not a fan of these kind of marketing tactics and as you clearly see in the, the photos there you could well most certainly see that the 48 megapixel capture is way more detailed and overly the photos look way better than they do from for instance something like a macro lens here that is the puny 5 megapixels so if they could have for instance removed that camera reduce the cost or put it into something else that would have been a nice touch here and uh, apart from that um, you get to see already the device it does have a headphone jack which is kind of a an, well, rare thing to see in 2020 and also as you can see it does come with this case it's a f I mean it's a fairly flimsy case but it looks okay um, 
it's really nice that they included that for free so thumbs up for that and uh, it comes pre well, pre-applied already when you put it, take out the phone out of the box so it's already on as you've seen here uh, to uh, the unboxing and the phone itself has a nice little effect on it I'm not sure if you can see that well on the camera but it has like this weird texture to it I mean the the plastic back over it is well just smooth plastic but it has this weird like texture to it in terms of how it looks like and apart from that as you can see you have uh, well aluminium frame um, plastic back and front glass so that's about it and fairly minimal bezels around with the uh, speaker grill right in the bezel it's a fairly minimal barely visible one uh, then at the bottom like I said we have the headphone jack and also a type-c charging port along with some writing on it which is a weird placement for for this but honestly I do have to say I like the placement of these markings instead of having them on the back like we're used to having it for instance like right here uh, this is underneath and it's well, barely visible so it makes the back of the device actually nice and clean kind of like that honestly and then as you already seen on the right side we have the volume rockers power key and that's about it and then on the left side we get a sim tray along with the sd tray and the this is a google button i believe it probably is remappable so you can map it to do something else but by default this will launch google as you will see so yeah there we go and at the top we just got a, a microphone hole here and at the bottom oh, we already went over the bottom so yeah so honestly it's a fairly nice device um just gonna leave it at the back so you can get a best look at it uh, and also i'll add a little bit of a note here the bump for the cameras is fairly minimal so this super thin case as you can see this this is a really thin case um, does cover the entire bump so if you put it on your camera won't be actually protruding past it hopefully you can see it clearly um, so yeah that's really nice I have to say but yeah this would conclude the overview of the device and at this state uh, I feel like this device is fairly good for the price that it comes in um, so if you're looking for a decent mid-range device i feel like i can recommend this device for you and yeah so if you found this video helpful don't forget to hit like subscribe and thanks for watching